So we'll move on to our, uh, our next speaker. Uh, we have Janine Moses. If you wanna go ahead and try and uh, share your screen. So uh, Janine will be talking about heads up display technology for deep space spacewalks. That can be a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Janine Moses. I'm an intern at KBR for NASA Johnson Space Center. I'm also a graduate student at UC Davis. I work uh, with Dr. Steve Robinson, who's here today as well. Um, I'm going to tell you about the development of a helmet-mounted display, or HMD as we call it, that's currently being tested in NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab as a prototype for head-up displays uh, that's part of the REVEALS grant. So um, in this presentation, we'll go through the project's foundation, um, how it started out, and discuss some of the hardware and software involved with this helmet-mounted display, um, as well as some of the results from an initial HMD testing last year, and what happens next and where this is going um, in the future. So um, as we've all been discussing, as we go deeper into space, um, comm delays will reduce mission control's involvement. Um, and astronauts need to become more autonomous uh, during spacewalks and surface exploration AVAs. So head-up displays will be crucial to providing astronauts with real-time information about their EVA so that, and their surroundings so that they can uh, make decisions more independently. Um, our specific project, like I mentioned, the Helmet Mounted Display, or HMD, um, is a collaboration between UC Davis for the REVEALS grant as well as NASA Johnson Space Center. And it is a low tech and low cost solution that enables real time information to be displayed to crew members during EVA training. Um, we've been testing this in, in the neutral buoyancy lab. Um, this is a picture from last year's testing. That's me here holding up um, the lab logo that I'm a part of uh, Dr. Robinson's lab at UC Davis. So, um, Two years ago, uh, UC Davis um, alum, oops, sorry, UC Davis alum Caden Jefferson and I created a very rudimentary prototype using uh, Dr. Robinson's old T-38 flight helmet, as you can see here. Um, and over the course of 2020 and throughout this global pandemic, Ruby Houchins, who's another UC Davis intern at NASA with me, um, she and I transformed this into a fully operational and voice controlled helmet mounted display which you can see here um, in this picture, which is on this uh, subject's right side of their helmet. Um, and we did this under the guidance of our mentors at NASA, James Stoffel, Jocelyn Dunn, and Dr. Robinson. So first, a little bit about the hardware we have. Um, the display screen is a commercial OLED and it was waterproofed uh, in-house. The display itself is only one by one inch, so there's not much real estate, um, but it is externally mounted to the um, EMU, to the spacesuit visor using suction cups, which work great underwater, but not great in space. Um, and the swing arm, uh, this mounting option, positions the display about six to eight inches from the user's eyes, so they can read alphanumeric text and look at um, uh, kind of simple or basic images on the display. Um, the other mounting option uh, is the uh, surface mount, and that's uh, integrated in the same, with the same display screen. And it's a simple chassis mounted as far back as possible on the helmet bubble. And when this display is mounted, it's, um, it only is used to show flashing colors or shapes as a method of testing a subject's response to peripheral signaling. And I'll talk more a little bit about that uh, later. This swing arm on the left, as you can see here, it can be mounted in the lower left or upper left or lower right or upper right positions. And the subjects and crew members got to choose their uh, position for mounting it. Um, so when the swing arm is being used, the helmet mounted display can show uh, these following modes. And um, we've got a little welcome screen like this. Uh, it shows their real time metabolic rate data which is a reflection of their energy expenditure, um, both as a numerical value and as a bar graph. Um, it also shows the phase elapsed time, or PET. And then there are three timer functions they can use to, um, like throughout the EVA training in the NBL. Um, there are also two images that show simulated um, location or translation paths on the ISS. Uh, they're very basic diagrams, and they're just static images. 
Um, and then for the surface mount, the, this picture on the lower left, um, when that is being used, the two display modes that are shown are either a flashing blue square or a small uh, flashing yellow circle. Um, when these were shown, the crew members were asked to inform us if and when they noticed um, any of these flashing display modes. And these are meant, like I said, for peripheral signaling research so that we can explore the minimum amount of alert uh, required and, and by extension, the minimum cognitive workload that can be used to communicate something to a crew member. So um, the MBL, the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, is a high fidelity uh, EVH training analog. Uh, it mimics microgravity and it has a one-to-one -one scale mock-up of the International Space Station inside of its Olympic-sized si Olympic uh, swimming pool. Um, so <clears throat> it, uh, HMD went through comprehensive and extensive collaboration between our team and all the folks at the MBL to ensure that we can essentially piggyback onto typical NBL training runs and have crew members utilize HMD as a training aid. Um, I have two videos here. I realized that I don't think my um, NASA laptop will permit me to share sound, but um, this shows an image here um, of, um, this is an image of a uh, suited subject uh, with the welcome screen on the display that you can see over here. Um, and you can't hear the sound, but they do ask for, they, they do um, use voice control and change the uh, display from the welcome screen to uh, the static image um, over here. So there's another one. Um, and this one is a crew member where they ask uh, to show the phase elapsed time. And then you, and then it will change um, in a couple seconds and you can sort of see um, and the, the, the reflection as well um, of the display changing to uh, PET or phase elapsed time. It shows zero because this is right when they were um, egressing the airlock um, in the beginning of the EVA training run. So um, let's see. So HMD was tested during five NBL runs and there were two subjects uh, during each run. So there were 10 users total. Um, the next few slides show a few different um, sets of results we got uh, back from the uh, crew members and suited subjects. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly because I want to um, be mindful of the time. I'm sorry about that. Um, but there were several considerations that crew members uh, were taking into account when choosing where they chose to have this mount positioned. Um, and that was good to know for future XCMU head up display development. Um, in addition, uh, most crew members rated metabolic rate as both um, probably or certainly useful, as well as acceptable or excellent visibility. And the phase elapsed time, which was another real time training aid, um, was also rated as useful and acceptable or excellent visibility. Um, I want to note that um, there was one instance where a crew member had a discomfort in the spacesuit and they were debating about continuing the NBL run or coming up uh, to the pool deck to get their suit readjusted. And they utilized the display and they asked to show PET and they saw it was still early on in the, in the NBL training run and they decided to come up and get their suit readjusted. And that was a great example for us of um, crew members using HMD on their own without um, the team having to prompt them to use it um, as a training aid. If we can go ahead and wrap up, Janine, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so in terms of what's next for this, um, this summer we're currently testing. Um, we've got a test on Friday at the MBL, and we're adding additional display modes, and we're hoping to extend this application to other environments, both in the or other suits in the NBL and other environments such as the um, Argos, um, which is the active response gravity offload system that will be used for future um, Artemis training. Um, before I end, I just want to acknowledge all of these groups. Um, we could not have done this without your help and enthusiasm um, and uh, mentorship. So uh, thank you very much. And um, this is just a, a, a GIF of Ruby and I um, in the MBL a couple of days ago after we were testing some, uh, some HMD hardware.